are some stories from the Zen tradition that I relate to or <clears throat> like to think about. Of course, from the Venerable Rinzai, and these are not literal quotes, just as I remembered them. So I'm not, uh, may not be quoting exactly. But of course, Rinzai um, is a funny character to read about. And I've always believed religion's problem is there's no sense of humor. And the one thing that appeals to the Zen tradition is its sense of humor. And along with the Sufi tradition, the Sufis have a sense of humor. But some of these stories, you know, of course there's a seriousness to the problem of the birth and death is a matter of great seriousness. And then it, this resolution may result in laughter. So Renza used to lecture his poor students after his own realization, which was somewhat accidental from getting beaten by his master over and over. And he is reported to have said to the students, you followers of today cannot get anywhere with your meditation practice. What ails you? Lack of faith in your own Buddha nature is what ails you. And then, of course, he also, um, there's a famous scene where he looks out on the congregation and says, I see a true man of no rank coming in and out of each one of you. Where is this true man? One student in the congregation comes up and he grabs him and says, speak, speak. And and then the student is befuddled and that's where the dried shit stick <laughs> comes from and we like to joke that it's Linzai's shtick his shit shtick you know how are you doing the shit shtick again <laughs> but he would see I mean, you know you can see the Buddha nature, everyone, and you shake them. Where, you know, wake up. And they still are befuddled. There's another one I don't remember where it came from. So. One Zen master was being bathed in a tub by his disciple, who then spilled some water or something. And of course, the story says the Zen master shouted at him, What right do you have to waste even one drop of water in this temple? Upon which the disciple was instantly awakened. <laughs> course but you know he's being not being mindful spilling water and the master takes that as an opportunity to try to cut through and wake him up what is this temple what is this water are we wasting it there's another saying that who would take wasteful delight in the spark from a flint? But all phenomena are sparks from a flint. The universe is on fire. Is that an occasion for our mindless laughter? 
Would we take wasteful delight from the spark from a flint? Here's one from Suzuki Roshi's. Someone once, I think this was in San Francisco Zen Center way back, that <clears throat> they had an appointment with Suzuki Roshi and they were late and they met, finally got there and apologized to him. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Suzuki Roshi. And his reply was, I'm not waiting. <laughs> In other words, I'm not waiting. I'm just standing here. One wonders if that was a joke to him, but or, you know, it's an expression that you know, as there is just this moment, we're not waiting for the future or thinking about the past. I'm in this moment. Well, you're here now. You know, why take no thought for the morrow? Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Here's another one. This is the persistent uh, delusion of all us. Wannabe Zen students, that someday, after I am enlightened, everything will be different. <laughs> there is no such time. Yet, I still believe it. There will be this moment of enlightenment, after which everything will be different. Yet. There is no such time. That time does literally not exist. It is just now. This one makes me cry. I'm crying right now. Because it was from Suzuki Roshi to Joko Dave Hazelwood, who was a, a uh, from the beat era, I guess, and I did a session where he was the practice leader, and he, remember, he gave a, a Dharma talk on the Vimala Kirti Nirdesa Sutra, which is very, he had to me, it was a great relief to hear this. I had just gone through a Kensho experience, was somewhat traumatized, and he had a very amusing discussion of the sutra to us during a session, maybe, uh, I think it was a five-day session, one of the last days. But his own encounter, he with Suzuki Roshi, he was just for a few years, one or two years. Then he came back and after Suzuki Roshi died and resumed his practice. But he found he was encountering this sadness during practice when he first started with Suzuki Roshi and he would cry. And he felt, I guess he was, you know, this is not, what is this, not, this is not meditation, this is not Zen practice. So he asked Suzuki Roshi about it, and Suzuki Roshi's, this story is on the website cuke.com, C-U-K-E, which has an exhaustive collection of, of stories from the students of Suzuki Roshi. So, Joko Dave Hazelwood maybe has Doko-san with Suzuki Roshi or asks him this question about his practice. Why is he crying all the time during meditation? And Suzuki Roshi says to him, you try and you try and you fail and then you go deeper. And it was, uh, I think it was just the thing that came to him at that point. It's not a traditional saying, per se. 
but he was just responding to his uh, to his condition at the time, and that's practices, you know, about failure over and over, the cycle of failure and effort going deeper. And any sport is all about losing, right? Even baseball or football, you spend most of your time getting used to losing. But you try and you try and you fail, but then you go deeper. Another Suzuki Roshi story at Tassahara. This is also from Kuke.com. He loved rocks and boulders and moving rocks and arranging rocks. And he had some students trying to help him split a rock with a chisel and hammer or something like that that was in the stream bed. Or, and they worked during a work period or all afternoon or something on it. And the students decided to, to uh, you know, give up for the moment and come back maybe the, the next day. But he saw <clears throat> that they did not believe that this rock would ever split. So he said to them, you know, just noticing how they were approaching this task. Right? And it's, of course, the metaphor splitting the rock is opening the mind. You do not believe this rock can split, but I know that it will. And so he's trying to inspire them, I guess. And, um, convey his faith or, you know, coming back to Rinzai, it's a, you know, your problem is the lack of faith in yourself. Lack of faith in your own Buddha nature is what ails you.